Hi, and welcome back to the Security Simplified series. Today, let's talk about SQL injection prevention. You might have heard of several SQL injection prevention techniques like prepared statements, whitelisting, typecasting, and escaping. But what are the pros and cons of each option, and when should you use them? Let's discuss your options. SQL injections happen when SQL code and user data are mixed together. This allows attackers to inject code to change the structure of the SQL statement to steal data, modify data, and even inject system commands. So first, let's talk about your best option, prepared statements. Prepared statements are also called parameterized queries, and they make SQL injections virtually impossible. Before we dive into how prepared statements work, it's important to understand how SQL queries are executed. SQL is essentially a programming language, so your SQL queries are essentially a program. And when a SQL query arrives at the SQL server, the server will parse, compile, and optimize it. And finally, the server will execute the program and return the results of the execution. And when you insert user-supplied input into your SQL queries, you are basically rewriting your program dynamically using user input. So an attacker can simply supply data that interferes with the program's code and alter its logic. And prepare statements work by making sure that user-supplied data does not alter your SQL query's logic. Prepare statements are SQL statements that are sent to and compiled by the SQL server before any user-supplied parameters are inserted. This means that instead of passing a complete SQL query to the server to be compiled, you define all the SQL logic first, compile it, then insert parameters into the query right before execution. Again, after the parameters are inserted into the final query, the query will not be parsed and compiled again. And anything that was not in the original statement will be treated as string data and not as executable SQL code. So the program logic part of your SQL query will remain intact. This allows the database to distinguish between the code part and the data part of the SQL query, regardless of what the user input looks like. Let's take a look at some examples of prepared statements. How do you secure this SQL query if you are using PHP and MySQL? To set up, we first connect to our MySQL database here by specifying the host name, username, password, and the database name. Then we can retrieve the user's input from the request post parameters. Let's start by writing a vulnerable query. A SQL statement is vulnerable to SQL injection when it inserts user input into the statement itself before the SQL statement is sent to be compiled. So this line of code uses user input to construct a query string and then executes the query directly. Whereas in a prepared statement, you would define the structure of the query first. We'll write out the query without its parameters and put question marks as placeholders for the parameters. This string will now be sent to be compiled by the SQL, SQL server as SQL code. You can then send over the parameters of the query separately. The SS here means that we are providing two parameters, which are both strings. This line of code will insert the user input into the SQL query. And finally, you execute the query. Something else to remember here is that using prepare statements does not necessarily mean that you are safe from SQL injections. You also have to use it correctly. For example, here, let's say that we concatenate the user input within the prepared function, then execute it right away. If you don't send the user input separately as parameters to your prepared statement, but instead still build your SQL query by joining string together, you are still vulnerable to SQL injections even when using prepared statements. So this query is actually still vulnerable to SQL injection. Let's say that your program allows users to sort their emails by some criteria. And if, if the user sorts their emails by the date the email is sent, the application will execute this SQL query to retrieve their emails. The SQL order by clause allows the query to specify which columns to order the results by. And this query will return all of the user's emails in our table sorted by the date column in descending order. But what if you want your users to be able to choose which fields your emails are sorted by? 
In this case, you cannot use prepare statements to secure the query. Prepare statements can only be used to protect fields that are not needed during the compilation process. So you cannot use prepare statements in column names, table names, SQL operators, or within an order by clause. So if you need to use user-supplied input in these fields, whitelisting would be the most appropriate defense against SQL injections. Whitelisting refers to the practice of only accepting input values that are known to be legit and rejecting all other input. In this case, you can use a whitelist of column names for the order by clause instead of allowing arbitrary input from the user. Let's say that users can only sort their emails by date or by the sender of the email. You can check if the user input corresponds to one of the allowed values and only then insert the value into your SQL statement. You can also map user-supplied inputs into predefined strings in the program to avoid concatenating user input into your SQL queries. For example, if you want your users to be able to sort their results either in an ascending or descending way, you could let users specify a Boolean value that would then be mapped to a string to be inserted into the query. And if your user input should be a simple data type like a Boolean, a number, or a date, you could also convert the user input string into a safer data type before it is appended into the query. This is called typecasting, and it can be used to protect against SQL injections without using prepared statements. For example, let's say that you also want to allow your users to retrieve their emails using their, using their user ID. And you know that the provided user ID should always be an integer. In this case, you can convert the user input string into an integer before you insert it into the SQL query. This will make sure that the input is a number and that no special character that can influence the SQL logic would survive the conversion. And you might have noticed that we could have just used prepare statements in this example. And you are absolutely right. I recommend using prepare statements whenever possible instead of typecasting because prepare statements work for all data types and so your coding style can remain consistent for all types of user input. So this method should only be reserved for when prepare statements are not available. And finally, the last way that you can prevent SQL injection is that you can also carefully sanitize and escape user input. This means that you either encode or remove special characters that might mess with the SQL logic. For example, some special characters that should be sanitized include the single quote and the double quote. These characters often allow attackers to break out of a parameter string. There are also some special characters specific to each type of database that you need to pay special attention to. For example, these are all test SQL injection payloads that have been used by security researchers and penetration testers to exploit a SQL injection vulnerability. This technique should only be used as a last resort and you should not rely on it if possible because it does not guarantee that it will prevent all SQL injections in all situations. And it is very easy to miss out on some special characters that could be used to construct a SQL injection attack. Let's take a look at this query again. What if you want your users to be able to sort their emails by a random field? If you cannot determine a whitelist that can be used in this situation, you can escape the user input string first and then insert it into the query. As you can see, you have quite a lot of options when it comes to SQL injection prevention. The best way to prevent SQL injection is to use prepared statements whenever possible and to use whitelists when prepared statements are not an option. Typecasting can also be used as an alternative to whitelisting when you cannot use prepared statements. On the other hand, input escaping and sanitization should not be used as the only protection against SQL injection, but rather used in conjunction with prepared statements and whitelisting for maximum protection and to prevent other web vulnerabilities. And that's it for today's security lesson. I'll see you next time.